Hi guys, Chris Twyman here from Drubbit TV, or should I say Dribble TV, like this guy's comment from last week. Very original there. There's a chance that he might not have liked last week's episode, but look, who cares? This is Leeds Talk, and welcome back to another episode. So within the last week, we've paid Oxford United and we gave them a 2-0 drubbing. So well done there, lads. I think we could have expected nothing less from this game. Of course we're going to win it. Oxford United aren't exactly a ferocious side. The most important thing was that the new players and the older players gelled together in preparation for the opening game of the season this Sunday against Bolton. So let's just have a quick look at this game. Of course, Rufi and Dallas scored. I think these two, especially Ruth, will come into his own this season. I think Dallas has sort of um, plateaued a little bit over the last year or two. He hasn't really hit the heights that we know we're, he's capable of. Although he did go to the Euros and he played very well. So he definitely is one of our most talented players. And I think he will definitely have a lot of games and, and a pivotal role to play in the coming season. I think Christensen thinks that about him as well. Although I've got a funny feeling um, Thomas Christensen really likes Ruth and I think Ruth will play a key role in this coming season. I've said this a couple of times, he's had a while now to sort of gel in, he's used to the championship and now he's actually starting to score goals. Let's take a look at this goal here, I love this type of goal, he's come off from the wing here and it looks like he's going to put a ball right across the box but he doesn't, he cuts it back inside and he just puts a very nice goal into the bottom corner. And actually, it was out of nowhere, really. I don't think anyone really expected it. And, of course, it was just very well done. And I think that just shows the quality that he's got. The fans look like they're loving that goal. They're jumping up and down in their seats. It looks like it's going to be a pitch invasion or something. I mean, this goal from Dallas is unbelievable. I'm not even sure if he even had this in his locker. But he's smashed this into the top corner from well far out. And it was a beautiful goal It'll come from though. I don't think anyone was expecting that either to go in. And you can really tell how good this goal was because the fans really have gone mental this time. And another thing impressed me about this game was that Wild Wild kept a clean sheet. The last friendly of the season, he's been in goal. Does that mean that Rob Green is now out of the team? Does that mean he's going to be sitting on the bench a lot more this season? It's hard to say, but I personally don't want that to happen. I do think Rob Green should get a fair run out. He was very good last season. I don't think it's good to keep changing the goalkeeper. Time will tell, of course. We'll find out on Sunday um, who's going to be in between the sticks. And if it is um, Wild Wild, then it obviously will be him that he views as the number one moving forward. One thing about the Oxford game, I think Alioski didn't reach the heights. I think we was expecting him to. Um, literally, this, the first minute, he created something out of nothing and he seemed to be doing quite well. But I think he was subbed off on the 65th minute or something like that. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think he played quite well? I thought he was all right, but... He definitely isn't reaching the heights that he needs to. But of course, it's so early. It's only a friendly anyway. Obviously, Oxford United aren't a great side. And he did play a lot better against... So that was a much better side than Oxford. He'll probably be starting the game against Bolton. And I think he's he's going to be one of our main driving forces this season for creativity and power. And he does like to get himself thrown in there. I think he, he gets stuck in a lot. Out of all the new signings, and my favourite part of the match was actually the Ekuban... Um, back pass the back heel um, straight into Sacco here and he's just fluffed it which is a shame I mean if it, it would be better if it was someone else on the end of that ball but Ekuban done well there and I, I like that it just shows that he's got a bit of flair and that's something that we're going to need over the season so I hope he gets some game time this game could have been a lot more if only Woody put a few of his chances away but as Christensen said at the end of the game, it doesn't matter who scores, it really just matters who scores more goals and obviously in this case it was Leeds. I know the fans went mental and everyone's very excited, but don't get your hopes up too much because this is only Oxford United. Hang on a minute, because earlier this month Middlesbrough played Oxford United and they couldn't even beat them, it was a nil-nil draw. So that means either Oxford United are stronger than we thought or Middlesbrough are shy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Middlesbrough are shy. Okay, some logic here. Middlesbrough couldn't beat Oxford, but Leeds did beat Oxford very comfortably, so that means that Leeds are better than Middlesbrough. Got it? Hmm. Did someone make a mistake joining them? Well played, mate. Well played. But look, time will tell. Time will tell. Okay, Leeds will have to play Borough at some point, but this is just a simple analysis, and it makes a lot of perfect sense. And all the fans in the bottom, in the comment section below, all the Middlesbrough fans on YouTube that like to comment on these videos and like to rub the salt in, well, look, there's your proof, all right? We don't need to say anything more at the moment. Let's wait until we play. 
But if you do want to comment on what I just said, then please leave what you think below. I'd be really interested to see what you've got to say. It does make a lot of sense. Middlesbrough couldn't beat Oxford. Leeds smashed Oxford. So there you go. So the beginning of the season's nearly here. We still have one player that's sort of on the ropes of whether he's going to come in or not. This is Aidan Flint. He's a massive guy. He's really tall. He does look like someone that would really add a lot of value to the squad. And I think that's someone that we desperately need. What's really thrown the spanner into this is Birmingham City. So um, Harry Redknapp has basically come out and said that he wants him or something. And it's just made everything slow down. And the latest update as of today is that Lee Johnson, the Bristol City guy, he's saying that no bids have been put in for Aidan Flint, which is a bit strange because we've been linked with him for a long time. So I very much doubt that no bids have been placed. But clearly something's holding this up. And obviously Raul Redknapp has come out and publicly said some stuff. Um, Johnson is not very happy with him. So let's hope that Lee Johnson actually says, look, Redknapp's a prick. So why don't you go to Lee's? So hopefully we can get it. I think that if we have Aidan Flint, that will really round off a really good summer's transfer business. The best transfer business we've done in years and years and years. But even if he doesn't, I wouldn't get worked up too much because I do believe we have enough at the moment to see us through. And obviously when January comes along, um, maybe more defenders will come onto the market. But we are a little bit thin in that area. And there's a potential that if one gets injured, we might struggle but if it's like last season then we didn't have a lot of injuries there so we we did get through quite a lot but if a red card comes you know Pontus Janssen he likes to get stuck in sometimes he might get a card and if he does then he's out for a few games and then we've only got um, a couple of guys in there that can really fill in his shoes so it is a little bit risky but hopefully Flint can come in. So we have Bolton on Sunday, so I'm really optimistic about it. It's an away game, but we've done really well in away games last season, and we've still got a majority of the squad still there. So what do you think is going to happen on Sunday? Do you think we're going to kick off with a win, or do you think Bolton have got the other hand being at home? Maybe it's going to be a draw. Or do you let us know in the comments below and share with all the other fans your opinions and your thoughts about the game on Sunday? And the comment of the week will go to Glenn T this week. And he said, um, who is this? He can't even say Gilsley, which is a part of Leeds. I was waiting for someone to say that. I knew someone would say that. Sorry to let you guys know, if you hadn't figured out already, I'm not from Leeds. And, you know, I never grew up there, so I don't know all the little places around there. And I certainly don't have an accent from there. I don't know about all the little names and how they're said. I am a Leeds fan from afar and probably one of the furthest places you can get away from Leeds in the UK. But who cares, right? We're all Leeds. To be fair, there's probably loads of Norwegians that support Leeds that, that can't say it either. Yeah, I didn't say it properly, but you know what I meant. Hopefully on Sunday we can kick off with a win and I'll do a video about that match straight after the next day. So only like five days away from now. If you do like these videos, please leave a like, comment and share it with all the Leeds United fans. You know, it does mean a lot. Let's all march on together and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.